In this tutorial, I'm going to look at plotting graphs uh, on a on a piece of graph paper. So here I've just got a grid. Uh, I think it's 10 by 10, and we're going to. I've got a set of data here, and actually it's not a very not uh, drawn up in a very good way because it's not actually in a table. Um, so I'll just quickly add some lines here, of course, because all tables should have lines around them. It's got a bit messy already. Anyway, okay. So what I'm going to do is plot this data. This this data's come from an electric circuit, and what I did was I uh, changed the voltage and measured the current that went through the circuit. Um, and so what I'll start with is when I'm not given any instructions on how how someone wants the graph plotted, then what I should do is I should put the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent on the y. So first of all, I need, I'll need i label my axes. So the independent variable is the thing I changed, and that's voltage. And the dependent variable was the one I measured, and that's current. So I've put those on the axis. And what I'll do is just to remind myself of um, another rule with graphs, um, if I tell you to plot something versus something, then that means y versus x. So I'll write up here that the title of the graph is current versus voltage. All right, and that so that and that would be what is on the y-axis and what is on the x-axis. Okay. So now let's have a go at um, plotting our graph. And remember that when we plot points on a graph, uh, you need to use proper markers for the points, like a cross, or a dot with a circle, or a dot with a triangle, or a dot with a square, something like that. So I've just drawn a couple of examples there. And if, if I was plotting multiple sets of data on this graph, I would need a key, and then I would need to write next to what markers I used, what each set of data is. So that was something I might need to do if I was plotting more than one set of data. Okay, so let's have a look now. I'm going to start plotting this graph, and the first thing, of course, that I need to do is work out what my scale is on each axis. And let's have a look. It's got to, on the horizontal axis. It's got to go from three to eleven and a half. So let's see. Maybe if I put three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, that will fit nicely across there. Basically, I want to take up more than half of the axis. Right, and that shows that I've spread the graph out as far as I could um, using a good scale. So, and that, of course, the scale has to be linear. So, we're 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's enough to put my data. And on the other axis, I'm going to have to go from 0 0.06, so pretty close to 0, to 0.29. So, maybe. Maybe I'll start at 0, and it'll be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. That's probably the best I can do with the amount of graph paper that I've given myself. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay, and those that scale there might be reasonably convenient uh, to plot my points. So let, let, let's get started. So if I, I'll start with a voltage of 3, and i got 0 0.06. So this is 0 0.01, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and three, so I'm going to use crosses for the data points here. And then, what have I got? 4.8, and I come up from 4.8 to 0.12, so that should be there. And six and a half is in the middle here, 0.16 is there. And 8.7, so that's here. And 0.21 and 10 and 0.26 and 11.5 and 0.29. Okay, so there's all my points, uh, and the the centres of the crosses show pretty well where the um, where the points are. So what I'm going to do now is draw a line of best fit and. Remember that a line of best fit is a graphical average of the points, and in this case it looks like a nice straight line, and, there, and what you've got to do is get an equal number of points either side of the line. So I've got six points here, I'm going to try and draw a line that's got three on one side and three on the other, 
uh, and it looks maybe somewhere there would be pretty good. So I'm going to draw my line through here. It's good to have a ruler that's see-through. makes it easier. And there I've got, well, I've got two on that side and one under the line and three on this side. So that's, that's close enough. Um, it, is, it is a bit difficult. But notice, though, that I didn't go any further than the points themselves. So out here there are no points, so I shouldn't go any further there. And back here there are no points either, so I shouldn't go there. So there's my line, um, and I just want to check, I, I did actually plot it on an Excel graph uh, pre prior to this, so you can see here are the points, and the uh, Excel has put a line of best fit through it. And have a look at the, um, up here I've just put the equation and the R squared value, so here the R squared value tells you how close a fit that line is to those points, and the closer to 1 the better. So 0.9948 is pretty close to 1, so it's a pretty good fit that line. And you can see here, that's the slope, y, this is y equals mx plus b, and m is that number, this is what's on the y-axis, what's on the x-axis, and this is the y-intercept. So it actually intercepts the axis just below zero at 0 0.0156, and that's an important um, point that uh, lots of graphs don't actually go through zero, zero. Um, so basically, if you don't have a data point zero zero in your table, uh, or you can't be absolutely certain that it should go through zero zero, then you shouldn't force it through zero. You should actually draw a line of best fit based on the points. Um, now, another common thing that you need to do with a graph like this uh, in years nine and ten is to actually use a slope uh, or calculate a slope for it. You might have to find something from the from the graph. So. What I've got to do first, remember that the line is actually an average of the points, so it's much better than the points. So you can't actually use the points, and you can't select one point and calculate it from there, because we know that the um, graph doesn't go through 0, 0. It might work if it went through 0, 0, but it doesn't. Um, so let's find two convenient points on the grid lines that are near the ends of the line, and let's say that one. The, the line goes right across the intersection of those there, those two grid lines, and this one here. Right, it's a bit close to the end, but anyway, and I will just might do this in a different colour just to try and make it easier. So what I'm finding now is what are the coordinates of those two points on the graph? Right, there's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. just drawing some lines across here to show the coordinates of those points on the line of best fit. So what I've got here, of course, is y2 and y1, and x2 and x1. So um, the formula for the slope equals rise over run, and that's the same as delta y, or the change in y over delta x, which is the change in x. And that's the same as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so there are all the f sorts of formulas that you might see uh, about a slope. And then now let's, let's work it out. So we're going to find out what y2 is, what y1 is, and x2 and x1, and then put it all in here. So y2 is 0.27. 0 0.27 minus 0.7, sorry, 0 0.07, and then over x2, which is 10.6 minus uh, 3.2. Okay, and then I'll just get my calculator. We'll work that out. Come on. Okay. Uh, so we've got 0.27 minus 0 0.07 is 0 0.2 over 10.6 minus 3.2. Oops, I didn't write that last number down. 
0.0270, that'll do, I'll just write that down. Uh, all my measurements are, well, I've got this, yeah, that's one significant figure, I don't know, I'll just write it down to that for now, I'm not being careful about significant figures, but I better just work out what that number was again so I can write it down. It's important to show all your working, because often all the marks are for the working and not for the answer. So, there I've done my calculation, and I've, I've worked out that um, the slope is 0 0.027, and on the Excel actually gave it to me as 0 0.0268, so I'm pretty close. Um, so, yeah, it can be a little bit um, variable, the slope. Uh, when you do it on a hand-drawn graph, it might not be the same as Excel, um, because Excel probably does a more accurate job of it. But um, I think we've done pretty well there. So that's, that hopefully covers all the basics of plotting a graph. Um, and, you know, in Year 7 and 8, you won't, you won't need to use the slope uh, method, probably. You might be doing interpolation and extrapolation. So uh, you might be asked, you know, what is the current when the voltage is 8? And then you would have to draw a line up here and then a line across there and then write down and show, you know, your working there shows how you got it, and then you would write your answer down. So, um, and then in years 9 and 10, you'll move into using slopes uh, and actually using that to get something from the graph as well. So, uh, in this case, uh, it's the resistance of, this, of the, uh, the circuit. So, anyway, hopefully that helps. Uh, and, yeah, I'll put together another one soon, maybe on a curve.